Aguillon Wild Way is one of the most important wildlife corridors in North America, and it is a critical part of a much larger wild way, the spine of the continent, or Rocky Mountain Wild Way, as advocated by our late friends, Dave Foreman, Michael Sule, and others. And Maguillon Wild Way is the habitat link between the Gila Blue Wildlands Complex in southwest New Mexico and the Grand Canyon Wildlands Complex in northern Arizona. And it largely follows the Maguillon Rim and Plateau, which is a southwestern edge of the Colorado Plateau, an immense, sublime geological feature in the Four Corners area and much beyond. The importance of Maguillon Wild Way really cannot be understated. If you look on a satellite image, of the southwestern United States. It stands out. It's high country with deserts t to the south and to the north in large part. And if wide-ranging carnivores are to move northward from Mexico or New Mexico, this is the way they are likely to go. When Mexican wolves try to recolonize habitats northward, they generally follow the Maguillon Rim and Plateau. When jaguars manage to get across the dam border wall and into the southwestern United States, their best chance to move northward and recolonize their old habitats, similar to wolves, they, and they apparently went at least as far north as the Grand Canyon, their best route northward is along the Maguillon Wild Way. And it also has many rare species, particularly in its streams and springs. Our friend Larry Stevens has been documenting the springs on the Maguillon Rim and Plateau, and the great diversity and abundance of springs. And they, these are absolutely critical. They have many endemic species. They're extremely rich biologically. And the streams that they form are also very rich biologically. So it's as important as any wildlife habitat connection in North America. It's important for preserving this ecosystem that is crucial for so many species, including the lobo and connectivity to habitats that are going to become increasingly important with climate change. And so as animals continue to disperse and look for new habitat in order to adapt to our changing climate. I think this corridor is crucial serving as that kind of connectivity for them and their expansion of ranges. So I should say the Muggy on Wild Way exists. It is a wildlife corridor now, but it's not nearly all protected. And so what we are trying to do at the Rewilding Institute and Wild Arizona and Project Coyote and other groups is get greater protection within Muggy on Wild Way and especially on the public lands. Much of it is public or tribal land. We want to work with tribes on land conservation and aquatic habitat conservation and we want to work with the public land management agencies and the private landowners but again much of it is public or tribal land and part of what we need to do to enjoy the great benefits of Muggy and Wild is get stronger protection on the Forest Service and BLM lands. That's, those are particularly high priorities. Try to lessen the amount of public land that is open for logging or livestock raising or mining, give more areas wilderness protection, protect more streams in the wild and scenic river system. Who will benefit? Countless species. There are, again, many endemic species in the springs and some in the streams that will benefit from protecting Maguillon Wild Way. Jaguars, again, their best chance of moving back into the southwest United States and northward is through the Sky Islands and then up into the Maguillon Wild Way and then on northwest from there. There are rare fish in some of the streams in Maguillon Wild Way which will benefit from its protection. It has the largest old growth ponderosa pine forest in the world in the Gila wilderness. That's another beneficiary of protection of the Maguillon Wild Way. And also just natural processes. If we let the place be wild, if we let it be as unmanaged as possible, as wild as possible, then the processes that help create the diversity of life on Earth will prosper as well. So the human beneficiaries, they, all of us who love outdoor recreation, hikers, backpackers, bike packers, hunters, anglers will all benefit from protection of the wildlife. I hope the tribes will benefit economically, perhaps in part by an, an increase in the quiet recreation in the Muggy Mountain Wild. Quiet recreation can be quite compatible with conservation and can help local towns and local economies. I think we we all benefit from having an interconnected habitat, right? When there's a healthy ecosystem that can support carnivore populations and ungulate populations and birds and endemic species that only are found in the Mogollon region, I think biodiversity and preservation of those species in that habitat. So I think the benefits are for people and for the biodiversity of the region, ensuring that this corridor st remains intact moving forward is key. One of the ways we have thought to promote 
Muggy on Wildway as a protected wildlife corridor is through creation of a Lobo National Scenic Trail. That's our working title. It doesn't necessarily mean that will be the end title, but we'd like to see a National Scenic Trail, a hiking trail, going from the Gila Wilderness in southwest New Mexico all the way up to the Grand Canyon. And we think we can do this almost entirely on existing trail. We don't need to build more trails, we don't think. We just need to link existing trail segments and give them the honorary designation of a National Scenic Trail, which actually means the National Park Service becomes involved, with, and that brings a great deal of wisdom and experience and resources with it. So the proposed Lobo National Scenic Trail would probably initially follow the Continental Divide Trail through the Gila Wildlands Complex, and then run along the Mugion Rim and Plateau on, exi on existing Forest Service trails in large part, and possibly if the tribes wished, on tribal trails through the San Carlos Apache and the Fort Apache reservations. Again, much of it's public land, so various hiking trails through the Apache Sitgraves and Coconino and other national forests can serve as parts of the Lobo National Scenic Trail. And then eventually, once it's gone across much of the Mugion Rim and Plateau, it can join the Arizona Trail and then continue on north to the Grand Canyon. That's the vision and we think it will be a, we think it will catalyze more land conservation, we think it will increase interest in the area and increase support for land conservation and wildlife conservation in the area. This becomes a trunk on which you have branches of, of conservation radiating out such as has happened with the great National Scenic Trails running north-south through the U.S., the Appalachian, the Continental Divide and the Pacific Crest Trails. And I think the Lobo Trail is an exciting proposition and potential project and partly because I see it as a trunk of a tree and so it serves as a way for humans to to explore and connect to this really important corridor and start to learn about its biodiversity, its rich landscape, its history and then from there how we can protect it further. So the trail is symbolic of a larger campaign to protect this wildlife corridor and so it's an exciting kind of first step in in educating people about the vast biodiversity that exists here and how important this corridor is for wildlife and and for people.